What's up everybody, Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the earliest example I could find of a player hitting the modern ATP style forehand. Coming up. All right, so let's jump in now and let's try to find the first player that ever had a true ATP style flip forehand in kind of the modern generation forehand. We have Rocket Rod Laver up on the screen right here, getting ready to hit a forehand, 11 time Grand Slam champion, amazing forehand, amazing backhand, excellent net skills, and a rocket for a serve too, right? So excellent serve. Let's take a look at this forehand here real quick, kind of slow things down. The first thing we see, right, is definitely elements of a modern forehand. So we can see, number one, the racket remains on the hitting side of his body right here as he gets to the back part of his swing. So he's not breaking the plane of his back and bringing the racket back here. It stays on the left side of his body throughout the swing right here. And then another really amazing thing and interesting thing we see with Laver is that he keeps the racket arm straight as he brings the racket forward right here. So his arm is completely straight like a Del Potro, like a Federer or a Nadal. He's got a completely straight arm on the forehand and his racket head is lagging way behind his hitting hand at this point in the swing. So he has lag on his forehand very clearly and he keeps the racket again on this side of his body as he pulls it forward. These are all very, very modern forehand elements. At contact with the ball, he has a completely straight arm at contact and then he has a little bit of this, look at that, little bit of this windshield wiper finish as he kind of rotates the forearm and hand over on the ball like this as well. So what keeps him from having a truly ATP style forehand? Well, the modern forehand, what we see from basically everybody is the racket head will be over on this side, okay, here as they pull the racket forward. And when he pulls the racket forward, it's on the left side of his body, but it's not tilted over this way. So that would truly make it a flip style ATP forehand. Let's go ahead and let's just move on to the next clip here real quick. So here we have another clip of Laver 1976 versus Borg here. And we've got a back view to kind of look at this again or look at it from a different angle a little bit. But as he goes through the preparation, right? Excellent loading in the body, the legs, completely open stance again, once again here, right? And this is 1976, using a completely open stance. As he brings the racket back, you can see the racket is more vertical. It is on the hitting side of his body, which is what we're looking for from an ATP forehand, but it's not tilted off to his left to get that dramatic flip, right? But again here, completely straight arm with the racket head. I know it's tough to see from this position, but the racket head is here. He has a completely straight hitting arm, which is something like we'd see from a Del Potro, right? That completely straight arm with the racket head lagging behind the hitting arm as he rotates you know, his hips and shoulders and pushes off the ground with his legs, right? So bend, push with the legs. And then at contact again here, we have a completely straight hitting arm. And then on the follow through as well, he's got this windshield wiper follow through here and finish as he takes the racket across here with the strings pointed towards his opponent. So he's very close to having that true ATP style modern flip forehand, but he's just missing that one component of having that racket head tilted off to his left. Let's take a look at the next player now. So here we've got Lendl, right? And this was a match that he played as an exhibition in 2012. And I just grabbed this because it was easy to see him on the near side compared to some of the older footage. That's a lot grainier. The forehand still looks the exact same as it did when he was in his prime in the 80s. So if we look at Lendl, he's kind of pointed to as well as somebody who hit the modern forehand, right? The ATP style forehand before that was even a term. He's very, very close. So let's just kind of look at this here. But what we see with Lendl, right, is brings the racket down first, but then brings it up. And as he brings it up, what do we see right here? We see a very clear position of the racket head lagging off to the right side of the body, right? So he definitely has that leg off to the right side of the body, preparing off to the right side of the body. And then his racket kind of baby flips here. It's almost circular if you look at his racket, the way it's coming back right here. When he gets into this position right here, it's kind of circular into that position instead of having that true flip that we see again 
where a player drops it a little bit more from here and it flips back really fast and extreme into there, like a Sinner, a Federer, a Nadal, you know, Djokovic, somebody like that. So he has the beginning part for sure here. You can see that racket tilted off to the right, left arm extended, right? All the things we expect from a modern forehand, semi-open stance. Gets kind of a baby flip, a little more circular. I think there was two things primarily preventing Lendl from having a true ATP forehand before that was even a term. One, the contact point is a little bit far back here, a little bit tough with that contact point. It had amazing forehand, don't get me wrong. And then two is his follow through. He never had the true windshield wiper finish. He really always kind of had this catch position like this, right, where he caught the racket like that. So it never really turned over with the forearm where the racket face and the racket strings were pointed towards the opponent. Sort of always had this catch position on the forehand. Let's go to the next example real quick here. And we've got Federer up on the screen. And the reason I've got Federer up here is because people always point to Federer as being the one who invented this and the guy who was the first. And I love Roger Federer, huge Federer fan. But at the same time, I think it's really important to understand he really wasn't the originator of the ATP forehand. And you can see here in this clip, this is a young Roger. This is Roger at like 16 years old. And what do we see here, right? We see the racket is clearly actually breaking the plane of the body. It's breaking the plane of the back here on this side. So it's not like the Federer forehand that we see in modern times, right? Where he has that racket head way off to the right side of his body before he brings it forward to hit the ball. So again here, racket breaking the plane of the back from this position, right? I believe Roger, this is 1998 this clip came from. So I believe Roger is about 16 years old in this particular clip. But a lot of the other elements of his forehand are actually the exact same. Look at the way that he loads, right? The body and the feet and the legs. Really good with the legs here. Left arm extended out like this. Really good rotation of the left arm. And then there is that racket head behind the hitting hand at this point, right? Really nicely into contact. And then we see that patented Federer finish right around the midsection with that racket head kind of doing that, right? And we also see that windshield wiper coming around and through right here as we get that wiping motion, lands on his left foot, and then starts to recover. I mean, it's a beautiful stroke, don't get me wrong. But there was a pretty big change on Federer's forehand from the time, you know, he was 16 years old or so in 1998, about until 2002, where he really started to kind of adopt 2001, 2002, more of that flip style forehand with the racket head over here and then flipping behind his body. But pretty big change from what that forehand looked like as a junior. And then the next example I want to kind of point to is somebody I really don't hear anybody talk about, but he pretty much had the true ATP style forehand. And that was Tomas Muster, who was one of my favorite players when I was younger. But you can see here, this is a match from 1994 against Michael Stieck in Davis Cup. And what do we see with Muster right here? What do we clearly see right there? We see the racket lagging off to the left side of his body because he was a lefty, right? So look at that racket on the left side. He's pretty close, but you can see instead of it really staying over here before he brings the racket forward to swing, the racket kind of circles back to right about here. So I'd like to credit Mooster with being the true inventor of the ATP forehand, and he does have some where he actually hits a true ATP style where the racket head really comes from here and then flips behind the body, but he didn't do it as often as the player I'm about to show you in a minute who truly did it on every single forehand. Mooster was an animal. He had an incredible forehand, an incredible backhand, incredible endurance, and the guy was an absolute beast, won the French Open in 1995, hitting rocket forehands against Michael Chang, but I just don't view his forehand truly as being ATP consistent enough with that big flip position to call him the originator of the ATP style forehand swing. All right, so here's our mystery player. If you know who this is before I say his name right at the end of this analysis, drop a comment in the comment section below if you knew who this was already just by seeing them on the screen. So we've got a serve here, kick serve, nice and wide, right? And what do we see? drops his body in rhythm, 
We've got a nice semi-open stance right here. The body is fully loaded, legs are bent. It's got that weight loaded up. And what do we see with the racket head? We clearly see the racket head is tilted off to the right side during the load. But the question is, does he maintain that? Is it a true ATP style forehand? And you can see right here from where the racket head is pulling from, it is clearly outside of the hitting hand by quite a bit when he pulls and he starts to rotate his upper body. The racket head flips with the tip of the racket head behind the elbow. So let's see that right here. Clearly can see that. I know it's a little bit of a blurry mess in this situation with old footage, but the tip of the racket head ends up behind the hitting elbow in this position right here, very clear. Contact well in front, we've got a ton of body rotation. The legs have uncoiled up and into the ball and forward, okay? And then we see the true windshield wiper finish with the strings of the racket pointed towards the opponent as he follows through. And then look where the follow through is. This is 1994, just FYI, right? That's the year. I don't know any teaching pro that was teaching anybody to follow through down by their hip in 1994. I can promise you nobody was, at least at that time, or focusing on technical details like following through down by your hip. It's a tremendous topspin forehand. Now, one little quirk of this forehand, I shouldn't even say quirk, it was a highly effective and massive forehand for this player, was the fact that this player pretty much had no loop on their forehand. So look at the hitting hand right here and watch him bring it back. There is almost no loop. A couple years ago, we did a video on Federer kind of having a half loop or is a little closer to the chest level and how he's greatly shortened up his forehand swing. This player right here had one of the biggest forehands of the 90s, hands down, no question asked about it, with almost no loop. It's basically there is no loop. You can see that hand really doesn't come up He's relying strictly on that stretch shorten cycle and that gigantic flip of the racket head and that unloading of the body to generate tremendous racket head speed. So again, if you know who this player is, drop a comment in the comment section below. I'm gonna say his name right now. It's Alberto Barisategui. He is a former top 10 player. He made the finals of the French Open in 1994, losing to Sergei Bruguera, had some pretty big wins in his career, was considered primarily a clay court specialist, and had a very extreme Western grip on his forehand. All right, so that wraps it up for this video on the earliest example I could find of a player hitting the modern ATP style forehand. If you found this video helpful, or you feel like you learned something today, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button. I'm Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net. We'll see you next time.